Have you heard the one about the ceramics expert and the 1960s go-go dancer? No, it's not a joke. Just one of our stories coming up as we bring you another priceless antiques roadshow. edition of the Antiques Roadshow is a perfect triangle, a memorable meeting between wonderful objects, delighted experts and interesting owners, each with their own story to tell. Tonight we're reunited with some of the most colourful visitors to have stepped in front of our cameras. I think collectors need to be both mad and eccentric. I think all those qualities help. Who made the jacket? Would I you... made the Hutch jacket, yes. Very... Matches the Hutch doll. Oriental expert David Batty admits to a private passion. I'm a huge addict of the 50s and 60s. To many people watching this, I mean, you know, this is the Antiques Roadshow. This is about antiques. Antiques have to be 100 years old. And Roadshow host for two decades, Hugh Scully, picks his most precious moments. Paul Storr was a remarkable goldsmith, probably the best native goldsmith this country ever produced made absolutely breathtaking things to find items like that really well it was one of those things that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up this is kenwood house in north london a place that's been home to some celebrated residents like the inventor john joseph merlin he was road testing a pair of roller skates he designed when he crashed into one of the fabulous mirrors here the fact that he was playing the violin at the time probably didn't help Colourful characters are an essential ingredient for the Antiques Roadshow too. And as you'll see, we've met quite a cast of them over the years. And these are some of our leading ladies. £8,000. £8,000, £8, oh, that's a nice thought. <laughs> Another few cruises. <laughs> How old is it? A couple of years. Oh, no! <laughs> are you joking? Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> He's not quite so sozzled. So he's singing? Yes. Ooh. Three to five thousand pounds. Well, I'll treat him with more respect. A dream owner on the Antiques Roadshow is one that's full of character, um, a little edge of eccentricity, somebody that's um, vulnerable, perhaps. And the most vulnerable lady I ever met was in her 90s. Well, this is a beautiful brooch. It's a very old brooch. How long have you had it? Oh, I suppose about 25, 26 years. I think I was around about 70 or odd then, and I'm 20, nearly 92 now. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't that marvellous? <laughs> she had brought me an Art Nouveau brooch designed by a, a jeweller called Ococ in Paris in 1900, and it had been given to her by the lady of the house in which she'd worked. My lady had gone out for the day, and, and it was very strange, because she had gone out to lunch with her friend, and I thought, oh, good, that gives me time to do what I, a, a little job in the house. Mm -hmm. we just lost our housekeeper. And I was working away, came in to, into the flat, just as she rang the bell to say she was coming home, mm. come in. Mm. Well, this was a very strong lady indeed. And, um, and she was very articulate and fearless uh, in everything that she did. But um, uh, courageous is the right word for her, absolutely courageous. I opened the door and her friend and she moved in, followed by two men. The one with the dispatch case said to me, lay down on the floor, this is real. No. And produced a pistol or a gun in front of me, you know. No. And I looked at him and I said, what? <laughs> You're so, so surprised. I think so. And then he turned around and said, don't be bloody stupid, this is real. No. So I said, huh? you get the hell out of it. I don't want you to call the police. In which they both, he and his partner, turned around and rushed out of the house. And she'd actually fought off some burglars from that house and driven them out into the street. Chased them part of the way down the road, but lost them at the corner. <laughs> you are absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I came back, <laughs> sat down on the doorstep and burst into tears. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, you were very, very brave, weren't you? And I think your, your, your lady thought you were very brave to give you such a beautiful brooch, didn't she? Yes, she gave me one or two very nice things in her life. She ranks enormously high, if not the top, really. Um, I think everybody fell in love with her, and it was possible for millions of people to fall in love with her through the power of the television screen. Wonderful stuff. 
Talking about interesting people, there were two sisters in Arundel in 2006 who were so delightful. Those were all my soft toys at the time, so I was a very lucky little All girl. of them? All How of many them. are there? I don't know, but we've still got 35 of them out of that picture. Perhaps these are really some, you know. And they told me which was their favourite, and I told them a bit about their toys and picked the odd one. When I was little, Flip and um, this one here, Lop, used to be with me constantly. There's another one here which intrigues me. I don't know whether you found yeah. out about... He's no, called he's Bingo. He's called Bingo because it says so on him. And it says he's always so. been Bingo. Yes. He once got left on a bus and he was oh, rescued. He, didn't. he did. The women were laughing away about their favourite toy and that's mine and that's hers. And you could just see these two playing together when they were little girls and saying, well, you can have that one, I'm going to call that one, that's mine, that one's mine, no, that one's mine. You could, they were doing it, aged whatever they were, eight in their 80s, absolutely heaven. But you've got a lovely photograph <laughs> here. <laughs> ghastly, really. Yeah. Oh, just, and, and that's you, is it? That's me holding him. Holding him. Mickey Mouse. Yes, and that's our mother, that is her, and that is our nanny. And that's... And what are you holding there? Are you holding this Well, one? I'm holding... No, I'm holding a doll which was uh, known as Big Pam, funnily enough. And it was a Chad Valley doll, and I've still got her. But sadly, the puppy ate half her face. Oh, as puppies do. As puppies do, <laughs> This is just the part of your collection. It is, I mean... 36 of them. 36 I dread to from think there, how much they're all worth. Well, it's wonderful to know. And how lovely. I'm so glad you came in with them. And thank you so much. Thank you so my much. Day. It's ladies like these that bring the programme to life. Our next owner brightened up a damp day in Scotland for Ian Pickford. Of course, I mean, you realise they're shoe buckles. Are they shoe buckles? Oh, yes, yeah, silver buckles on your shoe. <sighs> I couldn't believe they were shoe buckles because they were far too big. I had... <laughs> I tried one on my head to see if I could turn it into a hat. It wasn't wide enough. Um, I wondered if I could have a lovely, fancy buckle round my waist when I was a bit younger, when I had a bit of a waist. Uh, and that didn't fit, so I hadn't a clue. Her son, who was there, had said to me, you're going to have fun. <laughs> So, I didn't realise quite how much until I got into it. <laughs> what most people don't realise is that cut steel was more expensive in 1780 than silver. Was it? And so, this was actually a cheaper version. <laughs> <laughs> no! First of all, she was asking me some sort of... making rather unexpected comments every now and again. And I think we're looking at a value of about £400. Oh, how lovely. Do you know anybody who buy them off me? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there are some avid buckle collectors. Oh, wonderful. But what about the spoons? What can you tell me well, about the, these? The spoons are my sons. But the finale, if you like, when it came to value, most people react in a somewhat similar sort of manner. And you, you can't exactly predict the reaction, but you have a pretty good idea how they're going to react. But her reaction came absolutely out of left field. So, how much are they worth? <sighs> oh, I think you're looking Half at... Half a crown each. I think a little more. A little more. I think we're looking at at least £500. For four of them? Each. Each? Each. I must get round my son to leave them to me in his will. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> they, they were lovely, lovely crowd. Oh, marvellous, all smiling and joking and... They just roared with laughter. Hilary Kay met a couple of more recent additions to the cast in Bexhill on Sea. Well, it's sort of starting in Hutch Heaven, really, isn't it? It is for us. <laughs> what was the first thing you bought? That would be the Starsky doll. And notice the cardigan. I am was noticing the cardigan. Which was knitted by my mother in 1975. <laughs> 
It's sheer Aww. devotion, sheer and, devotion. And did she knit you that one at the same time? No, my friend here knitted this one. <laughs> And who made who made the jacket? Which I made is, the Hutch jacket. Yes, matches very, the Hutch doll. I mean, so now let's let's work. So you became for this is not your life. You no, have you I have, have normal, a, you have, have normal life. lives. Yes, we do. Have lives, but you yes. have, you share this extraordinary passion for Starsky and Hutch. We, we do. do. We do. Yes. The two girls with their Starsky and Hutch collection, I thought, were fantastic. And the great thing was. It was all fun for them, and they weren't taking it too seriously. And yet, the nub of the show, the friendship between the two men, is what made it so long-lasting. And they were good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that's a minor point, but... Not for me it wasn't. <laughs> I, no. have to, I have to say, he was my favourite. Oh, uh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's about 50-50. Yes. I think collectors need to be both mad and eccentric. I think all those qualities help. I don't suppose either of you can remember the theme tune. The theme tune, let me can see. Do it again? Well, surely an Oscar winning performance. Some truly unforgettable ladies there. And it's harder than it looks to come along to the roadshow with your object and just be yourself on camera. And it's not always easy for the experts either. One of the new additions to the team is ceramics expert Stephen Moore. Well, my first recording was a bit like the first day at school. I knew some of the experts, but like everything, I was a little bit nervous. I grew up watching the roadshow, so I knew how it worked from a public point of view but I'd never actually been in amongst it. So, as I say, like the first day at school, you knew some of the bigger boys and some of the head girls, but you weren't really sure where you would fit in. And then at the corner of my eye, I saw a tea set made in Newcastle, and I thought, why isn't it coming to me? That's just what I'd love to do. And then, lo and behold, it's brought over to me and said, oh, this is made in Newcastle, you know about Newcastle. It was something interesting. But that's the great thing about the Roche, they bring it to you and you're able to tell them about it. It's Mailing, who are perhaps the most famous uh, Newcastle pottery. And really for um, many Mailing collectors, this is uh, something of an icon for them. A Mailing collector will give their eye teeth for it and they would get very little change out of £3,000. Oh, is more than a surprise. I expected it is. <laughs> so there'll be no more playing Dolly's tea sets with it. I won't. Somehow, you know, uh, well, yes, um, I think on balance, if, if I had to buy these, um, I think I'd have to be looking at £40,000. Good luck. <laughs> you do surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> so Brand uh, valued it at more or less £40,000, but eventually it sold to the Salters Company, which is one of the great city companies. It sold to the Salters Company because they regarded it as so important uh, for £66,000. Hugh Scully with some precious moments, which brings us towards the close of another show. Tomorrow, arms and military expert Graham Lay recalls some moving encounters as he meets the descendants of prisoners of war. I feel the roadshow is terribly important from one aspect in particular. It helps to uncover, to show to the general public those stories that people could tell that are mainly kept within the family. Mark Allen confesses to a mania for collecting. So there are many objects in the house that were acquired in that way, through patience and waiting, and after many years just coming across one in the right situation and knowing that it was just an absolute bargain. And ceramics expert Henry Sandon tells us about the one that got away. I didn't do the Whitney Court Rouge, son John did it, curse him, and, and he got, I suppose, the most magnificent slipwear tig that's ever turned up on the Rouge. If I'd have been there, I'd have fought him tooth and nail to have it. I think you'll agree that Henry's become a bit of an institution. He recently received his MBE, but the first time he was singled out for an award back in 1992 was a bit more stressful. Because it was the one that strikes fear into the hearts of TV professionals everywhere, the Noel Edmonds gotcha. He was set up. An unlikely looking man turned up with a very valuable vase. Henry was tipped off by a pretend police officer that they were interested in his client. Remember, Henry thinks it's all for real. The rest is priceless. I'll leave you to enjoy it. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.
just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a it's all right. Is it broken? Pieces here. Oh, oh, <laughs> now, Mr. Sandon. Yes. Uh, Henry, you are the recipient of a Noel Edmonds Got Your Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I shan't recover from this. <laughs> this will be the last road show I'll ever do. <laughs> Fiona Bruce and the team are about to start filming a new series of the Antiques Roadshow and they're going to be at Lincoln Cathedral this Thursday the 19th of March from 9.30. Next on BBC Two, a dazzling new series exploring a land of fire and ice. Part one of Yellowstone is coming up in just a few moments.